Welcome. Today I stumbled upon a new setting which I found in Azure DevOps uh, in the service connections which I lastly had another session about so I decided well might be a good point to shortly uh, talk a little bit about that and give you some updates on some new options that you have with um, service connections to Azure in Azure DevOps. And with that let's get started. So let me switch my screen over so that you can see um, I hope my face will not get in the way too much. So here I have my usual demo project in Azure DevOps for Coding Freaks. So what I'm talking about is when you go to the project settings and you head over to the service connections, what you will find is that you now have this weird little dot. I don't know how long this is there. I think one or two weeks now. And it also gives you a hint that you can uh, convert this existing uh, service connection to one which is leveraging workload identity federation instead of secrets. So I will first uh, try to show you what this is um, and how it looks in the Azure portal and then I will talk uh, with you about what I think about that. Is it good? Is it not? Should you do it or not? And so on. Okay. So um, I will link the other video which I made about service connections to um, service principles for Azure and you can kind of combine the information of the both. It's still valid, uh, but it might be some good points here for you because it makes your life so much easier. So before we start with the new feature, let's have a look into the service connection first. So the service connection is in fact a service principle or uh, in Azure. So let's inspect it. Let's hop over to Azure and see how this looks. So this is uh, the manually created um, service principle, which you can tell most of the times because you see I um, just created a, a DevOps service principle for my complete company organization and I'm reusing the service principle. So what this service principle also has is it has a client secret, which is about to expire, which is interesting because uh, I need to update that uh, in the near future. So um, this is now what I talked about in the other video. So in order to update, I could create now a new client secret and then I need to go over to my Azure DevOps organizations and wherever I use this, for instance here, I need to go and edit this and this is only possible because I created it manually and did not the recommended step to automatically create it. And then I have to update the key here and then I'm good to go. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, and with that information, let's talk about what is this blue dot. So this blue dot tells you, hey, why um, are you not uh, converting it to um, workload identity federation instead so that you can omit um, certificates or secrets and you need to understand what this is. So hopping over here, what this means is it, want, it wants to change this service principle to not longer use client secrets but to use federated credentials. So federated credentials is something in Entra ID which is also new for me. Mm. So if you don't know what it is, uh, you feel just like me. And uh, I just, in preparation for this tutorial, I just read a little bit about that and uh, got myself a little bit more uh, comfortable with it. So what it basically is, is if you have external services, um, you can um, create a, a service principle which uh, basically has some information or there are some information shared with an external service which is which means it's not in your tenant um, like Azure DevOps the organization has nothing to do with the Azure tenant it's another thing living uh, or happens to living in the Microsoft space but it does not have to could be GitHub could be in Kubernetes no matter where it lives could be uh, any other service which um, adheres to the protocol Microsoft tells you here under this link. You can read more about this, so OpenID Connect. Um, and uh, basically they create um, some uh, other requests to the microsoftlogin.com, which are based on some information 
which is shared between this other service and um, Azure. And so you cannot just use it, as far as I understand, to create now your own app registrations, just like that, to um, uh, use it. Um, you need to be uh, aware of this other protocols and it's slightly different when you try to create a barrel token for that but it's still a barrel token at the end which is shared so how does it look so instead of changing the existing one i will go and create a new service connection so let me do that real quick so i go to azure resource manager and this time it says again automatic i don't think I want it to be automatic. Uh, later, I want it to be manual, but, but you know, for um, the demo purposes here, mm, I think it's good to start with that and then I can show you what you can do manually to um, reach the same point. So go to next and then all you need to do is wait for the subscription. Um, I just give it the name federated and then I'm waiting for my subscriptions. So I pause the video for a second. So there it is. I selected my test subscription, no resource group. So I wanted to give uh, subscription wide access mm. and I hit save. So I again will pause the video and it took about, I don't know, 30 to 45 seconds in this case uh, to create it. But it's there now and we can have a look at this. This is Azure Federator. I just named it that way. And let's look at the service principle here. So this service principle now has this automatically generated name, which I don't like. You could change it in the branding and properties. But as I said, I would rather create one manually. Mm. When we go over to the certificates and secrets, it instantly goes over to the federated credentials and shows us that there are federated credentials. No client secrets, no certificates, only federated credentials. So if you go here and click on it, you will see that this federated credentials now ha have some information, the issuer and the subject identifier, which you can kind of deduct. I actually don't know what this UID is. It seems to be um, unique for every uh, DevOps organization. I don't really know where I can see it, probably in some URL. So if you, uh, if you know it, Jen, uh, just go ahead and tell me. So if you want to create this manually, basically you just have to copy out this. It's always the same for the same Azure DevOps organization. And basically this is deductible too. It's just the SC uh, colon dash dash, then your the name of your DevOps organization, then the name of your project, and then slash the name you gave to the service uh, to the service connection. Um, so if you have this, all you need uh, then later is a globally unique name. And as the audience, you will have to select API Azure AD token exchange, obviously then you can or cannot add this one and then that's it. All of this is uh, a custom issuer, which you can see here. Mm. There are three other predefined issuers, like when you want to access key vaults in another tenant, you there is a predefined issuer, one for GitHub Actions um, and one for Kubernetes. What I don't get, by the way, is why um, Azure DevOps for whatever reason is not a first class citizen here like github i don't get it um again um i'm i'm kind of disturbed just a side talk by the fact that obviously microsoft is working on azure devops and improving azure devops uh, on on one side but on the other side it feels like a stepchild here because um it kind of never arrives uh, uh, as a first class citizen uh, in azure so I don't get that, um, but that's just a side talk. Uh, so it's other issuer and that's what it is. Um, so if we now take a closer look, if you see this is Coding Freaks demo, let me go to this one uh, and maybe ask Azure DevOps uh, to, can I refresh this Coding Freaks, there it is. This is the app registration, as we can see. So now let me hop over to uh, this subscription here. 
and let me see the access control pane. So, and then check access for coding freaks demo. And as you can see, this thing is now contributor on this subscription. So what happens when I delete this? It should be the same behavior in Azure DevOps. So if we go here and delete this Azure Federated now again, delete, it will clean up everything. And let's look here. So check access, uh, let me see, for coding freaks. Um, this should not be there anymore. Maybe we need to refresh the page. As always, eh, let me do a hard refresh. I think it's better. Check access and now the service principle should be gone. It's not, but it has no role assignment. And now let me look into my uh, entra ID again um, so that I can check for the uh, app registrations here. So this is uh, gone here. So the other window was just um, uh, lying to me. This is expired too, by the way, but anyways. So um, as you can see, it removes the app registration later, uh, which is kind of another problem. If you reuse the, app, uh, the service principle by using the manual stuff, it will not remove it. Uh, so I think this is the more um, controlled way to do it again, as I did it in the last video, which I will link here. So, but anyways, um, the, the good news about that is that when you use this federated version, you really don't have to care about um, the passwords, which could expire. So I think it's a good point to start with. So um, that means in every new um, service principle generation, we should use um, this option and then do it manually because now we know what needs to be entered there um, and then it should work. Um, I will try this out for sure. And I just wanted you to update so that you know what this blue dot means. Uh, if you followed my service connection videos, you will see it appear. So I hope this helps. It's a short video today. But anyways, um, I hope you know now understand how this works a little bit. Um, and let me know if you want to hear more about this issue. Have a nice day.